Welcome to Sabino Canyon by Tucson, Arizona. This is where God did some very important things in our day. You get quite a panorama of the mountains from the visitor center. From here we'll ride the shuttle to where the road ends and then just hike the rest of the way. This is the, the bus that takes us up the hill to the canyon. Everybody has to get on. Brother Perry's not going. <coughs> you warming up? This trail, Window Rock and Broad Whale Falls Trail, these trails are very steep and narrow. When hiking in Tucson, we always suggest you have at least a gallon of water, as our summer temperatures reach above 110 degrees. And you can dehydrate or get heat exhaustion very easily. On my left, 20 feet up in the rocks, the fuzzy cactus are teddy bear choya. Teddy bear is the worst variety to get stuck by. They're very loosely connected to the main plant. And if you're hiking and there's a slight breeze, they can become dislodged from the main plant and land onto your skin coating. This waxy coating prevents it against sunburning as they will blister and peel, just like you and me. The fruit of the swirl will drop over 40 seeds. These seeds are so small, they're no larger than a fly speck. For one of those saguaro seeds to grow to a mature swirl, it must fall underneath a mother plant tree or shrub to give it shelter. And the first four years is very crucial. After that, they grow quite nicely on their own. We have a lot of hikers, walkers, and joggers that go through the canyon, usually early in the morning in the summer to beat the heat. And what better area can you get your exercise, breathe the fresh air, and enjoy all of God's beauty? On my right, halfway up the ridge, running the full length of the canyon is one of our easiest and most popular hiking trails, the Telephone Line Trail. On my right, we have our round-pointed soul hole cactus, the roots of the cold home. When Brother Brandon was here, he, we didn't have the trams. We could drive all the way up here, stop. And so he went ahead and one day he brought Meaty up and they stopped here. You he did not know about this trail that comes up here. He went ahead and went back behind this restroom, which my mother and I used to take people back down from Sword Mountain, this route that Brother Brandon went up. But we stopped doing that because w there's a landslide of rocks over there. The last time that we had to take somebody across, we hadn't realized that the slide had done its thing. <laughs> and so we had a very treacherous, treacherous <laughs> I didn't want to use the word, but that's right. Yes, yeah, so we prayed <laughs> the whole time getting across and we did. If you go up behind the restrooms here, and take the trail that he took, which I'll show, show you from up here. You can see it very plainly. You go over this direction, you can see the end of the Jagged Peaks right here. If you look at the, <laughs> this first set of mountains, that's just where we walk. If you look at the second set of mountains, where it's humped here, comes back down, and comes around again, that is the first part of the Jagged Peaks. Brother Branham said Jagged Peaks. These don't look jagged to me. Okay, but if you went the trail he went, they are very jagged, okay? Um, the other thing, after he had seen that, he also saw this trail up here. So instead of that, he now, after that, since this was a deer trail, it took a, it's a little harder to go up. He went up this direction, and it's a bunch of switchbacks. When we get up there, there's a fork in the road, and you'll see a sign. <coughs> One heads off this direction to Sword Mountain. It also will go through an area here where there's coal, and that's where the dove appeared and the squirrel. And if we were in the right position, which we're not, unless you knew exactly which rock, there's a moon-shaped rock right up there, and Brother Brown called that one. He said that that one was the size of his, the apartment that he stayed in. 
and we go through the, that area, and that area is somewhere where the squirrel, up, you know, down, he found it when he bounced off his Choya. chest. Choya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Seven. If we go this direction, then we're going to go over towards Eagle Rock. Now, Eagle Rock, all you can see now is it is a pyramid-shaped rock. And um, the, the word eagle is no longer written in there because um, Brother Green took up some people. After they found it, he took up some people. And then, um, yeah, like two or three days later, mm -hmm. they came back and disappeared the rock. But, so this trail is the one that we'll see the most, which I think I'll go ahead and take you that direction first. The resurrection plant dries up and looks dead from lack of water, and then when it rains, it turns green again and comes back to life in just three days. From across the canyon, the light has already reached the place where the king's sword appeared in Brother Branham's hand. Brother Green was inspired to <coughs> look for the spot to place. Him and Brother uh, Linhart, David Linhart, and Brother, what's his name? Uh, I don't remember the third person, I just remember uh, Brother Linhart. McClintock. McClintock? Okay. McClintock. Okay. They got to this point, and by this time, Brother Green was kind of disappointed. He felt they really were not on the right spot. And Brother Linhard insisted that this was it, so they kneeled down and started to pray. Is that it? No. Brother, Brother Green had told them in, the, in one of the sermons, he told them that he could take them to the spot. And Brother Linhard, who is 10 years older than he is, said, okay, take me. And Brother Green said, well, Brother Linhard, you know I can. And he said, well, take me. He said, but Brother Lenhart, he says, take me. And Brother Lenhart's German, so Brother Green calls him stubborn. And Brother Lenhart says he's steadfast. <laughs> and so they went ahead, and he said, all right, I'll take you. So he went ahead, and that morning, Brother Green, being 10 years younger, he outran Brother Lenhart. And didn't wear a coat. And he didn't wear a coat. And he outran, and they came running up here. They got up to here. And um, Brother Linhart pulls out his book, his quote, or his whatever, however he had it written down. And it was this quote where Brother, Gr Brother Branham says something about that the sword was glistening in the sun. And it's like, well, at, at that time of day, by the time they got here, there was no sun. When we pointed out back there, you could tell that the, that, you know, the, the sun wasn't 
this is only area, other than way over there, which is where, not where Brother Branham was. And at that time, all this was very dark. And so Brother Green told Brother Leonard, he says, Brother Leonard, I am sorry. He said, I will go back down to the people, and I will apologize and tell them I was mistaken. And Brother Leonard said, no. He says, we're going to pray first. Well, Brother Green, like Brother Tim said, did not wear a coat. And this is January, okay? So it was cold. So they got down there, all of them got down there, and they started praying. I think Brother Linhart prayed first or something. And Brother Linhart prayed a long prayer. And Brother Green's sitting here freezing because he had sweated coming running up here. And so he was cold. And he's sitting here, hurry up. <laughs> and then Brother Linhart got finished. He asked Brother McClintock to pray. Brother McClintock prayed. And then Brother Green was like, by this time he's frozen and he wants to go down. <laughs> And Brother Linhart said, no, you're going to pray. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's cold. <laughs> he's, he feels like he's made a mistake. And he, wants, and he's, he feels bad. So he sits down there. He's, he's kneeling there. He's praying. And all of a sudden, he starts getting warm. Just like the sun is coming out right now. That was the last one I made it. <laughs> Yay. But anyhow, he started getting warm. And he said, I'll be honest with you. I thought I was having a Pentecostal experience. <laughs> By the time he finished praying, he opened up his eyes, and the sun, instead of being up there, was if you look at the saddle over there, there's, it's the one on the left, there's a little finger that sticks up like this. The sun was coming right between here, shining on this area and this area alone. Hmm. Like and it that's is right how now. they identified this as being the area. This is 10.45. It was about 11 o'clock, huh? It was 10 o'clock. Oh, 10 o'clock. In January. Okay. I think it was like January 10th. I can't remember the exact date, but it was in January. If, if, not, if, you, if you came back in January, I think it's like the second week of January, if you came back then, you could do the exact same thing that we did when we came up running up here um, to take the pictures that you'll see on the bulletin board. You'll see a little panorama. There's one that's totally dark, and it's just all dark. And then there's another one that shows the sun coming through and hitting this area. I was looking out the window towards the great Catalina Mountain. There where I live, and I looked up there where the angel of the Lord put that sword in my hand. Where the seven angels that you see in that picture appeared. Great things taking place. And I looked, and as I looked there, I was standing by that tree again. Right where that squirrel was. I looked up there and I thought, that's that squirrel's den. And I thought, I wonder if he's still up there in the vision. I raked the side of the tree, out he comes. And before I could even bat my eye, he's the oddest looking squirrel I've ever seen. Now you have to know my ministry to know these symbols and things. He jumped at me, but he missed me. He missed my mouth, hit on my chest, and fell off. And as soon as he did, I heard something said, go to the Catalina Mountains. So I turned around. I said, Nitty, are you awake, honey? And I woke her up. She said, what's the matter? About five o'clock in the morning. I said, I was looking out here, and I saw that squirrel again, honey. What squirrel? I said, what I seen up there at Mayo's? I said, you know what? He missed my mouth this time. He never hit me. He went out on my chest. I said, praise be to God. I've looked for, since a little boy, I have longed to see that happen. If I could ever see that happen, not even before I know what a vision was, if I could ever see that happen, then I said, I'd be all right. Whatever that told me, that's what I'd be. And for 40 years, I've looked for that, and there it happened. I looked right on the path, and there right that little squirrel had jumped at something and missed it, and it hit a bunch of choya, that's jumping cactus, and ran through his head, chest, stomach, and he was dead. That odd looking little squirrel, he had missed my mouth and hit that choya. And the voice of the Lord said, your enemy is dead. There's kind of a white sword in the rock there, isn't there? Yeah, it does. It looks just like a sword. Right on the rock there. Right above the white eagle. What they had done is they had first originally, they were going to make the trail down through here. And so what they've done is in this spot, and you can tell another spot's down like by the white quartz. If you stop and you see the white quartz, 
You can look down below and you see holes like this that, they're, that they have drilled and they put dynamite in and they blasted it away. The brothers have gone so way back. They went ahead and they saw these. They said that, you know, they was blasted away and everything. So they went down here and this rock right here, they've measured it. It fits this rock exactly. Mm. So this is, that's that down here. But what they did is this trail didn't work out to be the best trail. So that left this for us. <laughs> and then the main trail now goes across the top. Mm -hmm. Was well, this rock like this from Brother Brandon? Yes, it was already He leaned up against the rock here. He's just a little bit taller than I am. I'm, I'm not quite 5'7", and he's 5'7". He leaned up against the rock here like this. And the Lord spoke to him and told him, what are you leaning against? And they pushed back like this, and right in this area here was Eagle written. It was capital E, an A, a G, a capital L, and an E. You cannot see it now. This, as you can tell here, this used to be all rough. People have chipped this away. Mm. But this, if you, if you take a look in the pictures on the bulletin board, you can see that. And on the pictures on the bulletin board, this is hard to see it now. But this even had an eagle look right here when this was all filled in. When you look up this way, you can see the eagle right up here. And it looks like the sheet in the area at the very top is his beak facing straight down to you. It looks like he has his wing pushed back like this and he's looking straight down at us. Something attracted me over to a big rock. About noon time, so lay your hands against that and pray. God in heaven knows this is true. I laid my hands against the rock and looked up towards heaven and started praying. I heard a voice coming out of the top of the rock there. It said, What are you leaning against over your heart? I raised back like this, my bare shoulders naked from the waist up, hot. I looked back, and there was rope in the quartz, in the stone, white eagle. Just exactly what the vision said that the next message would come forth by. We're on the path back to the parking lot. So let's look around a little more at the scenery while we listen to what Brother Branham said about the sword or God's word in his hand. In Sabinia Canyon, sitting up there that morning, I had my hands up and my, the wind had blown my old black hat down. <laughs> when I was standing there with my hands up praying, I said, Lord God, what does this mean? I can't understand it, Lord. What am I to do? If it's my going home time, let me go up here where they never find me. I don't want nobody to be mourning around if I'm going. I, I want just the family think I just took a walk and they won't find me. Hide me away somewhere. If I'm going to go away, uh, let me go. Maybe Joseph will find my Bible in here someday and let him use it. If I'm going away, let me go, Lord. And I have my hands out and all of a sudden hit my hand. Now, I don't know. I can't say, did I go to sleep? I don't know. Did I go into a trance? I don't know. Was it a vision? I can't tell you. Only thing I can say is what I, just the same thing like them angels was. Yeah. And it struck my hand and I looked and it was a sword. Yeah. And it had pearl handles. Amen. Real pretty. And it had a guard over it with gold. And the blade looked like something like a chrome, like silver on it, real shiny. And it was so feather edge sharp, oh my. Yeah. And I thought, isn't that the prettiest thing that's fit in my hand? I thought, that's awful pretty. But I said, hey, I'm always afraid of them things, a sword. And I thought, what will I do with that? And just then a boy shook down to that and rocked the rock. said, it's the sword of the king. Amen. And then I come out of it. The sword of the king. Now, if it said a sword of a king, but it said the sword of the king, and there's only one the king. Right. And that's God. Yeah. And he has one sword. Right. That's his word. What a yeah. 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 That's so healthy, God. Then over his holy desk here with this holy word laying here. It's the word. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a day we're living in. 
What a great thing. See the mystery and secret? The third sent in there. When this left me, something just come to me and said, Don't fear. Now I didn't hear no voice, like on the inside of me spoke. I have to just tell you the truth, just exactly what happened. Something hit and said, Don't fear. This is that third pull. This is a real nice walk in spring. Huh? This is real nice in spring. Yeah. I bet so. Okay, we're uh, going to be pulling off here for just a few seconds, probably 60 to 90 seconds at the very most, waiting for a uh, shuttle coming into the cane. As soon as she gets by, why, uh, then we'll be on our way. I am going to ask while we're parked right down here, though, waiting for that shuttle, please remain on the shuttle. Do not get off the shuttle at this point. I hope you've enjoyed retracing the steps of the prophet. You know, if we really believe that William Branham is the Elijah that's the forerun the second coming of Christ, then the only way to really follow him is to obey what he says. That's to receive the Holy Ghost so we can say amen to every word of God and walk in the beauty of holiness, being humble and loving and no longer loving the world or the things of the world. May God bless each one of you and give you the very character of Jesus Christ.